Hello, I'm Donna Scale along with my co-host Tiffany Ross. Welcome to A Time to Dream. Yeah, you guessed it, we're still at the NRB, the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. What a blast we're having. We're connecting with old friends, we're making new friends, we're learning new uh, things that can help us do better to bring great shows to you. So NRB is such a blessed place to be and we're so glad to be here this week. And I'm excited about our next guest. I have admired her from afar. I've always won the opportunity to get to know her better. What a better way than to invite her to share her story with all of us at the same time. Our guest today is Dr. Trudy Simmons, but let me ask you a question first. Have you ever felt stuck in life? I know I have. Maybe you've been lacking <clears throat> purpose or motivation and you just need a good push. Uh, Dr. Trudy Simmons <clears throat> is here to share with you exactly how you can do that. She's the owner and CEO of TAS, T-A-S Productions, LLC, which produces the Christian View television show and the Christian View online magazine. Now, you've probably seen The View, but we're talking about the Christian View, which is a world, which is a Christian worldview, and it's an amazing show and an amazing magazine. She is an ordained minister. Bible teacher, speaker, author, nutritionist, trainer, life coach, and licensed pastoral counselor. She has also produced and hosted Everyday Living with Dr. Trudy, and she's the founder of Seven Bridge Marriage Ministry. Last but not least, Trudy has been married since 1997 and a mom since 2006 with two children. Welcome Thank to you. A Time to Dream. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're I'm so excited, excited about here. this. So we mentioned your story. Yes. Everybody has a story and we like to start at the beginning. So okay. tell us a little bit about your childhood and your upbringing. Okay, um, I was raised in Atlanta, Georgia. I um, am the second child of four. Um, my parents are still together and married, so let me nice. just say that, and my dad and mom are both believers now, but before that, it was a really rocky childhood, you know, abuse and um, just a lot of anger, and I learned to hide, and I learned to take everything inward because I didn't want to be the one that ruffled anybody's feathers, and so I was the one who was smiling but yet dying inside, and so my other siblings, they would act out um, with drugs and alcohol and, you know, things like that, and I, I started turning inward and started taking all the blame onto myself, and then I became the, the child that wanted to make everybody smile and everybody happy. And um, so life, life growing up was hard. I had a learning disability and a speech impediment, and so I was always told to be quiet. That my what I had to say didn't matter; it wasn't important, and that I needed oh, wow. to be quiet and have someone take care of me the rest of my life. So basically, they said you'll never amount to anything. Um, you might as well find Wrong. someone to marry you <laughs> and have a bunch of babies. And oh. so, um, in fact, in high school, I, I say I was voted the least likely to succeed by my classmates and my teachers. And so they, they made a, a, a little award for me and said, this is, this is pretty much your life. But God had other plans. God had other plans. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that kind of response can spur you on to prove them wrong. Yes. And so that was probably a little bit of it as well. It, I went into, I went into a, um, a lot of depression, mm. a lot of eating disorder, um, self-harm. Just because I thought, well, gosh, if the people who are supposed to love me and support me and encourage me don't, then I must not really mean anything to anybody. Um, and so it, for a long time, Donna, I, um, I, it didn't spur me on. It, it, it put me into a deeper. A, a deeper, deeper hole, and, and no one really knew because I, I would smile, and because I didn't talk, no one really knew that I was, I was dying inside. Wow. Yeah. It breaks my heart, really, to hear that because you're just such a kind and um, personable Beautiful. person. And Dr. Trudy Simmons <laughs> now, right? Like, yes. If you ever dreamt as a young girl that that would be your trajectory. Right. So um, it makes sense. I didn't have a dad in the home, and mm -hmm. I thought I could be the exception, but quite honestly, I was textbook. Right. Looking for love in all the wrong places. I didn't have it from my yes. dad. Yes. Um, was that kind of your scenario where in relationships you felt like you needed 
someone to validate you? Oh, always looking yeah. for someone to validate me. And yeah. my dad was in my life. And yes. in fact, I was his favorite because I almost died twice and he was there to oh. rush me to the hospital. Are you and sure so, about that so I was, um, yes. Um, Nothing dramatic, but I was in the back of a Jeep at age eight, and my dad was driving it, and he pushed the gas, and I fell out in, in the in the traffic, and he had to scoop me up, and he actually ran me down the hill, um, put me in the car with my mom, and they drove me to the hospital, and I had to have um, my skull operated on because it was wow. it was busted. And then when I was 12, a, a little girl across the street got mad at me and took a rock and smashed it over my head same thing <laughs> and so um you know my dad was always there for me more so probably than my mom um, I think my mom felt a little jealous that my dad was so protective of me um, but still trying to fit in more so with women than, than men you know mm -hmm. I had that approval of my dad even though you know, I was the only one who could talk him down when he was angry, when he was being abusive. I was yes. the go-to person to calm him, him down. So, um, in and out of bad relationships still, because I still didn't know who I was in Christ. But yes. yeah, yeah. Did you grow up with any kind of faith? I know sometimes people they they're raised in the church, right? But they don't necessarily have a believing, a functioning family in the Lord. So I didn't have a believing, functioning family in the Lord, but I, I knew the Lord, and church was my safe place. Mm -hmm. So Sunday mornings, I would wake my mom up, and I'm like, we have to be in church this morning. And I would sit in the, the front pew, and that was that was my safe place. Um, and I always had to be in church, always had to be there. Um, but then we would come home back to the normal, you know, and go back to school. But every Sunday, I was in, I was in church, yeah. So I know that there are a lot of... Um, a lot of women especially who suffer from eating disorders. Yes. I'm sure if I knew the statistics, I'd share them, but I'm sure it's on the rise. It is. And so can you talk a little bit about an eating disorder and maybe how someone could get help with that? Or Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I mean, eating disorders come in all different shapes and, and, and sizes, and I had both of them, bulimia and um, anorexia. And so, you know, you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, and right. society doesn't help much because they want us to be a size two or a zero, which is pretty unrealistic, you know, being yes. in the health industry for a long time. <laughs> it's just almost unattainable unless you starve yourself. And yes. so, um, and especially young girls, young little girls, they want to have that, that hourglass, you know, skinny figure and... So it affects, it, I think it starts now at age nine and goes all the way up, you know, into to our 50s. You know, we want to look the part. And so I mean, eating disorders of hiding what you eat, making yourself throw up, taking laxatives, doing everything that you can to mm -hmm. to not eat and get the food out of your body, which I know that sounds kind of gross, but that's what that's yes. what you do when you have an eating disorder. You, you hide it. But, I mean, there is help. And, and, you know, I'm living proof that you can be set free of you know, either type of eating disorder yes. that, that's out there. You know, there's there's counselors out there, really good counselors who love, you know, people and want to see them get set free. And it is important to find the right counselor, you know, that's not going to try to coat it over with medication, but yes. really get to the root right. of the problem because that's the only way you're going to have true freedom is finding the root of the, of the cause. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that's near and dear to my heart because I dealt with that in college. Yes. And I saw my 16-year-old daughter go through it. And um, it's, it is really a beast because it is. It is. Uh, you can tell yourself a lot of things and it can twist because I remember as a young girl, if I had somebody tell me, oh, you're too thin, I would either think, oh, you're just jealous. Right. Or right, I right. would think, good, good, that's exactly what I want, <laughs> yes. you know? And so these people that thought they were doing well to, to caution me mm -hmm. was actually feeding it. Right, you right. Know? So when you lose weight and someone says, oh, you look so good, and you're like, well, didn't I look good before? I, you know? <laughs> right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. But it was ultimately the Lord right. that got me out of that and counseling. And you say that there's a point in your life where you were so beyond yourself and so miserable you said Lord either take me or show up please. right so right tell us how what led you to that and what was that experience like you know I was 19 and I was I remember driving I was driving to work and I was at a stop sign and I remember the street and I had just um, I had just had enough I had enough mm. of just the brokenness and the 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 anguish that's, that was in my heart um, 
And I said, Lord, I know you're real and I know that there's freedom and if you can free me from myself, then I want to spend the rest of my life sharing your love to your people. And I, I was at the stop sign and I said, but, but if you're not and you're not going to do anything with me and this is how my life is going to be, then please just take me home. I, I don't want to be here. There's, there's no point in living if I'm not living. There's just, there's no point in just going through the motions. And so I um, went to work and then I went for a run and I just remember um, running and looking up and I heard the Holy Spirit say, look up. And he goes, I died for you. And I saw a picture of a cross and he goes, but I'm not there anymore. I rose so that you may have life and I love you with an everlasting love. And at that moment, you know, life didn't get easier but I started to think differently. And so I started to behave differently because I was thinking differently. I still had to come out of those bad relationships and that negative mindset that I had. And I still, and I moved out of my house and started making my parents' house and started making moves to, to better myself. And so that's when, that's when it started. But you know, I used to, I, I, would, I would cut myself often during that period and just watch, you know, watch myself bleed because that was a comfort. And, you know, people who don't do self-harm, that's a, a comfort because they see the pain, but they can't feel the pain because they're so consumed with pain. And so, you know, the Lord took that away and I have no scars wow. from it, which is, which is huge because most people are left with scars. Um, but so just the healing process that started at age 19 and the Lord put people in my life. I started a job at Ronald Blue and Company, which was a Christian financial planning company. And they just poured first time ever people pouring love into me. So it was, it was an amazing turnaround. Yeah. But that faith takes a decision yes. as well. You know, you can grow up in a Christian home and it doesn't really make you a Christian. Right. You can go to church and it doesn't really make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is when you yield your life to Him and you give your life to Him and allow Him to come into your life, change your life, and you choose to follow Him. So I know you made that decision a long time ago. Yes. You chose to follow Him. and. And like you said, that doesn't mean you're not going to have trials or tribulations because right. the Bible tells us on this earth there will be trials and tribulations, but it does let you know that you're not alone. Right. You'll never be alone. And you, and I have this little plaque in my kitchen It says, ain't nothing going to come up today that me and the Lord can't handle. Amen. That's and right. you know, lots yeah. of stuff comes up, but I know, I know that God can t turn bad things into good yes. if we just wait. And in hindsight, a lot of hard, terrible things that we went through. I think about you, you went through a tough childhood, a tough yes. situation, but now you're a pastoral counselor. Mm -hmm. You know what it felt like, right. you lived it. And so what better way to be able to help somebody else through it as well. Right. You also mentioned a little bit earlier about finding the right counselor. Yes. And I think that's an important topic today because Everybody's a coach. Everybody wants to help everybody, right. but not everybody's the right person for you. And yes. so how would you suggest that people find the right counselor for what they need? You know, I think sometimes, you know, it is trial and error, but you want to find the counselor who's not wanting to give you 12 steps to a better this or 12 right. steps to a better that. You want to find the counselor that can actually teach you how to move your mountain. Yes. Because so often we are stuck. But then we go and we just, we talk and there's never any change. Yes. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of like interviewing your counselor. Okay, now tell me how, how, how have you been successful in, in your struggles? Because, you know, as a trainer too, my goal was always to not have that person with me for years, yes. but to train them physically so that they could train themselves. And I think that's what counselors need to, yes. to be. They need to be able to say, okay, my job isn't for you to be here for five years. Yes. My job is to get to the root quickly yes. with the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can be set free, so we can pull it up at the root and you can move on with your life because right. I don't want to see you here in a year. I right. want to see you set free, but a lot of counselors, they don't, they don't view it that way. They view it as a lifelong, commitment and God right. when God sets you free you're free indeed and so finding that counselor who has the end goal in mind yes. and that can get to the root quickly and to make sure it's a biblical counselor right. yes. because a lot of counselors will probably medicate yes and just write you prescriptions mm -hmm. that will just not get to the root of the problem right. just make you feel better for a day or two but then uh, it's short-lived and that's why the addiction that's why addiction is so prevalent today because counselors are prescribing you know yes. 
medication for depression and then if you have depression they want to give you something to help you wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night and and the addiction just keeps going because you're not dealing with the problem you're putting the band-aid over it so yes. finding a counselor that is not into prescription right. is good I want right. to piggyback on that for yes. a second because as you were talking about you know thinking about the scripture it, the truth will set you yes. free and I think a lot of us in the church and even those of us who seek out Christian counseling it's a waste of money if we're not going to be totally honest. Exactly. It's a right. waste of mm -hmm. time. And we do that a lot. We'll, we'll join the small groups, and none of us are really willing to be vulnerable. Right. And we wonder why we're still in the same place a year from yeah. then. Statistically, they say 95% of the people that are sitting in church pews are wearing a mask because yes. they're afraid to be real, because yes. they're afraid they're going to be rejected. Yes. Because if you really knew me, would you really like me? And so people are living in fear of being real. And I was talking to someone yesterday. I said, how can you heal if you're not real? Yes. I mean, you have to be real in order to heal because when you bring something into the light, that's when the Holy Spirit starts to do the work. Right. Yeah. So how did you get into television? Christian View is an exciting show, and it's, and uh, tell us about how that all happened for you. You know, it's so funny because um, Again, being shy and, and you know, it, it's funny that how the Lord has yes. such a sense of humor. But, you know, I had this vision for The Christian View years and years ago because I was sitting down one day and I was watching The View and um, I was like, we need a Christian version of The View because this show <laughs> is, you know, <laughs> it's a little, it's lacking in a lot of areas. But yes. so I went to a studio and I gave them my idea and they had, they told me, okay, well, it's going to cost you X amount of money. And I looked at my husband and he said, you know, we can't afford it. And so we, we went, we left and um, someone else started it. Someone else started it with the same vision. And um, two years after, I, so I went to audition. I asked if I could come audition and they said, no, you're not what we're looking for. I was like, okay, that's great. <laughs> um, you know, God is always up to something. Yeah. So I just started doing Ironman and working out and, and fulfilling that, that goal of, that I had of competing. And um, I got a phone call, would you like to come and be part of the Christian view? And I, I was like, absolutely. <laughs> and so the Lord took me on that journey. And then two years later, the lady who had started it asked if, if I wanted to take it over. And so the Lord just brought it full circle wow. and, um, you know, and it's his timing, isn't it's, it? It's his timing. It is, it, it is his timing, and it's is just a, it's a beautiful thing that that, it, that the Lord has done. So, so you might tell the listeners a little bit about the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Topics, so, what topics you yeah. cover. Or so the Christian View, we've been going for seven seven years. We're finishing up our seventh wow. season. That's great. Um, we talk about everything. We talk about abortion. We talk about eating disorders, addictions. We um, socialism. We just had Mike Lindell on. We talked about cancel culture and um, his book on yes. what are the odds. I mean, we all have an overcoming overcomer story. So we talked about that. Um, anything really we talk about anything we talked about the the ten commandments recently and i i got an email from someone thanking me they're like you know i just forgot about the ten commandments and you know and she's like you reminded me that i need to you know ten commandments are still part of the bible and so um and they statistically more people know what's in a in the ingredients of a hamburger than they know than they can cite the ten commandments wow. and so um just trying to bring awareness to what the bible says about every topic because God has a lot to say. Yeah. Yeah. How can somebody watch um, your show if they're not in Atlanta? So they can go to our YouTube channel, The Christian View. Um, you can visit the YouTube channel. Our website is thechristianview.tv. And um, you can find us there. And on social media, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. great. So Trudy, you've had a lot of experience in your life, just in different areas that um, journeys that you've had and um, I'd love to hear how you met your husband yeah you have two children right? I do and yes one is adopted she Would is you share that journey with yes. us yes so um, I met my husband I was 26 Six when I met him, yeah. um, he told me three weeks later that he loved me and wanted to marry me, and wow. I was like, I was, said, I was like, I'm sorry, what? Because um, I had been in such bad relationships. I had been engaged twice before, and I canceled one wedding six weeks before the wedding. Um, but my husband is amazing. His name is Brian. We've been married 25 years, wow. and um, that was always told I could never have children. And then the Lord surprised me with Jonathan. He's 15 now and amazing, amazing son. And then um, my, my niece got pregnant and she couldn't keep her baby. 
she was a, um, an addict and the, the courts took the baby and put her, put the baby in foster. And so uh, one night we were just praying and, and Brian felt like we needed to step in. He's like, we need to keep her in the family. So we went to my 10 year old son and we said, you know what, we're thinking about adopting Albie into the family. And um, he's like, I think you should, I think we should because she needs you and she needs us. And so oh. we agreed as, a, as the three of us to um, adopt Albie and she's five now oh. and she is a spitfire. She, <laughs> I call her Miss Sassy Frass just because she is just, she's just loving life and she loves to be in front of the camera. Whereas my son and my husband, they like to stay in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So. so again, like Tiffany said, you've done a lot of different things. Yes. Let's talk about Seven Bridge Marriage Ministry. How did that get started and, yeah. and what exactly do you do there? So we, uh, my husband and I, we led the marriage ministry for nine years at our, our at our past church. So we were at for 19 years. We were the marriage ministry there, and we would um, we would counsel, we would um, mentor, and then we would teach classes every Wednesday and Sunday, and then we would host marriage retreats. And the Lord normally would bring us those who were um, on the brink of divorce, and so mm. we were able to minister to those and bring you know, healing into their marriage and life back into their marriage, which led to the book, The Seven Bridges, yes. um, and how um, just God has a plan for every marriage and we're, every every marriage is gonna go, go through yes. trials and tribulations and we need to bring it all to the foot of the cross. And, um, you know, we don't have the perfect marriage. We always say we have the, we've been married 25 years, but it's been the best 23 years of our life because, you know, <laughs> the first so two right. years are like, yeah. Yeah. Lord, what did I do? And, and bless his heart, Brian, he married me and he just, um, he didn't know the depth of my wounds. Yes. And so the Lord used him, which is re one of the other reasons we, we started the marriage ministry. The Lord used him to, to do so much healing in my life because mm -hmm. he loved me unconditionally and he loved me through all my issues that he didn't yes. even know about that I brought yes. to the, the table and my family. You know, and he was strong enough in the Lord to really, really pull me through, you know, so. That's great. What, yeah. you, what would you say are some of the major challenges that marriages seem to, some of the topics that keep, we circle those wagons a lot in marriage? You know, I think one is expectation. We put so much expectation on our spouse when our expectation should truly only come from Jesus. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I think another one is, is identity. If we, if we know who we are individually, then together we can be so powerful, yes. for lack of a better word. Yes. But so often we try to feed from our spouses. We try to get our, ins you know, we try to feed our insecurities, our lack of identity from our spouse. And so we're walking around wounded yes. instead of whole. And so, you know, God wants us to be whole. And so, you know that movie, Jerry Maguire? Yes. Where she goes, you complete, you complete me. me. I'm like, no, no, no. God is the only one who completes us. And if we look to our spouse right. to complete us, it's never going to happen. And we'll, we'll walk around empty. Yes. And, you know, I think, too, um, communication. We lack communication, especially in today's society. We're always on our phones. Like, if you go out to a restaurant, you'll see couples. Yes. And all they're doing is scrolling. There's no one-on-one. There's no -on -one. And we're, we're, we're made to communicate. We're made yes. to look in people's eyes and we're made for touch. And, yes. and we've lost that in today's society. So I think those are two big ones. Yeah. Well, I can see why the Lord blessed you with the Christian view because you've had a lot of experience. You have a lot of knowledge on a lot of different topics. If you had just a minute or two to speak directly to the listeners today, what would you like to say to them? You know, I would probably say that you know, Jesus Christ loves you with an everlasting love and never compare yourself with anybody. I think the enemy likes to trap us in the comparison trap. And, and when you look in the mirror, I want you to know that you are fully loved and fully accepted by Jesus Christ. You lack no good thing in him and he has great things for you. And I pray that in the name of Jesus that who's ever watching this has a supernatural love encounter with God that rocks your world and changes your life for Jesus. Because when we say yes and we fully surrender to him, the adventure just begins. And that's right. what we need to be doing. Right, so and there's Jesus. no problem that Jesus can't help right. you solve. Yes. And uh, no matter what you're dealing with, he didn't create you to deal with it all on your That's own. Right. He created uh, himself to be able to help walk you through anything that you're dealing with. But it starts with inviting him into your right. life and giving him your life. And if, if you've never done that before, this would be a perfect time just to bow your head and, and just ask God to fully reveal himself to you, to show you 
who he is and to come into your life and you want forgiveness for your sins so that you can come into the presence of a holy God and walk with him and, and allow him to live out your, your life with you. And that's what he wants to do and he does it for you free. It's a free gift of yes. salvation. And not only does it do it with you in this life, but you get to spend all eternity with Amen. him. So, you know, this is just the trial run. Really, life is about eternity. Your eternity is too long to be wrong, and you just need to ask Jesus Christ into your life and see what he will do for you. Um, we'd love for you to reach out to Dr. Trudy. You can um, reach out to her at her website, which is trudysimmons.com. We'd love to hear from you as well. You can reach uh, Tiffany and I at a time to dream at gmail.com. And if you want to know more about Jesus, feel free to call us. You can call us at 972-380-0123. We'd love to share Jesus more with you, answer any questions you have, and help you get on to the rest of your life with Jesus. So you've been listening to A Time to Dream here at the NRB, National Religious Broadcasters. Thank you for listening. Have a great week. Keep dreaming, and may God richly bless you.